it's stuck in my head. Oh, okay. Wow. If you walk out of this video and you are not hyped for the story possibilities of Mass Effect 5, I don't know what to say to you. This has to be, I kid you not, one of the most complex, deep teases that we've seen in video games in a long time. Because all Bioware did was shared one image with one clip of audio, one bit of data in the corner of the screen, and the entire Mass Effect community is speculating on the possibilities of where this story will go. And I am stunned because today is N7 day, and I was expecting something, but what we're gonna get into today, I find tremendously exciting. Now do know, I am what I would call the signal booster in this situation. I am familiar with the Mass Effect lore. I am not gonna act like I am the lore bible himself, like I know everything about it. A lot of this is because of the community's discoveries, which I will highlight throughout the whole video. So shout out to all of you, because you did an amazing job, and we have a lot to string together here. But let's not delay any further. It's gonna be a chonker of a video. If you're new here, you're into Bioware news, Mass Effect, Dragon Age, we cover it all here, consider subscribing. Now let's begin with a letter from Bioware on N7 Day, just to set the table before we really feast here. So we begin by rolling back the clock a little bit here, where we saw at the end of the Dreadwolf update where they had entered their alpha milestone that they had promised us that there would be some stuff happening on N7 Day. Now we have some snippets from the letter here, such as, since we last spoke about the next Mass Effect game, pre-production development has been proceeding very well. The team comprised of Mass Effect franchise veterans as well as some amazing new additions to Bioware has grown steadily. They've been hard at work crafting new characters and locations that you'll love, as well as revisiting many that you'll remember. So that's already a pretty interesting note right off the bat. One day when we're ready, we'll have more to share on the next Mass Effect. So thank you for being a part of this journey with us. It's exceptionally exciting for the team and we'd love to continue sharing glimpses of what we're working on with you in the future. Concluding with now a note from project director Mike Gamble, which reads, in the nearly 15 years since the release of the first Mass Effect, the biggest reason we still love working on it is the warmth, dedication, and passion of this community. There are some of you who have been with us through everything. We've grown together, sacrificed Ashley together, faced difficulties together, and laughed until our faces were tired together. And for those of you who are new to Mass Effect, welcome. I can promise that many years of fun adventures and characters you'll fall in love with are still ahead. Regardless of when you joined us through four games and more expansions, I can say with certainty that we're in this because of you and every N7 day is a wonderful reminder of that. As we look forward, each week is a fun and exciting challenge for the team. We love bringing this universe to life and although there's much more we wanna share with you, that'll have to be for another time. For now, there is something we want you to have a look at. We've intercepted some strange footage from one of the monitoring stations in known space. It could be nothing, but, and it cuts to this here. This is something that Bioware was promoting via a tweet as well, where you could download the raw file to see things a little more up close and personal, enhanced, if you will. Now, I kid you not, there is a lot to take away here, and it's a testament to the deep lore that Bioware has crafted with Mass Effect, because you're gonna start to see the conspiracy board fill up mighty fast. Let's start off with the actual bottom text that people were trying to decipher. It reads, Vacuum Dock Relay Construction Record, monitoring station operated by Green Dagger Limited, which would be a brand new corporation within the Mass Effect universe. Property of Deep Space Dow SAV. Ship Captain Sub Navark Soaral Zillion Jones for internal use only. Now, this is particularly interesting because the captain name does have Quarian ties, but it has a human surname. Some have speculated even an intergalactic mass relay. And I think we're going somewhere with that because when you download the file, yes, it goes this deep. When you download the file, the name of it is SA Intercept Cetherium System Doc 314. Now, continuing on, we have a wonderful post here from Cody Lawrence who writes, when you download the file and look at what they named it, it says SA intercepts Ethereum system doc 314. SA stands for Systems Alliance. Looks like the humans intercepted something in Ethereum system. Hasn't been mentioned before. Doc 314 equals Relay 314 incident, perhaps. It was the first contact for. 
To unpack this further, Relay 314 was a dormant relay leading to uncharted star systems. Humans went to this relay to activate it and the Turians detected them. The first contact war was the result. Did we finally use this dormant relay and it led us to the Cetherium system? Or is the Cetherium system a link to Andromeda? Did the Milky Way humans intercept a relay that shoots us to Andromeda? Now, this is a really big point because obviously, as we know, they are trying to connect the current Mass Effect trilogy that we're familiar with, with Andromeda in a way. And I have a theory as we get deeper into this video on how I think Bioware is going to kind of kick the dirt off their feet a bit in the terms of uninteresting characters that will be left 600 years in the future in the Andromeda galaxy while keeping the interesting tendrils that we did learn through Mass Effect Andromeda with the arcs and the missing quarrying arc and so on and so forth. Like there are bits and pieces here that I think within Andromeda are worth taking a look at, are worth keeping around. I know not everyone agrees with that. But as we get deeper into this, you'll see how I think they're setting it up where we're going to be maybe 100 years out from where Mass Effect 3 ends. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves because we also have to talk Mass Effect 3 endings. They did say at the end of the next Mass Effect trailer, it says Mass Effect will continue. Now, of course, that means it's going to take place after Mass Effect 3 or is it going to be Andromeda because technically that was Mass Effect 4. Well, it seems like we're starting to get an answer of what ending they are building off of Mass Effect 3 with. Now, if you haven't played and beat Mass Effect 3, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to spoil one of the possible endings that you can get. So if you have yet to play Mass Effect 3, go do it first and foremost, and then come on back to this video and we'll speculate a little bit further. And the reason why this is important to bring up is because of the destroy ending. Now, what you'll see in this image here is what seems to be a mass relay under construction. However, it is different from the mass relays that we have seen previously, suggesting that it is being rebuilt from top to bottom. And that would then connect to the Mass Effect 3 destroy ending being the canon one because it would leave the galaxy without the mass relays that they had built everything with. Especially when you see within the actual trailer that again revealed the next Mass Effect game, there were destroyed mass relays and even audio at the 47 second mark saying, is anyone receiving us? We have lost contact. It would all connect to the idea that they are rebuilding the mass relays here and that the destroy ending is the one that they are choosing to build off of. So keep that in mind as you theorize, as you speculate that that is probably the safest route to go on what happens after the destroy ending. Now, continuing forward, we also want to talk a bit about Relay 314. As Cody had written on his Twitter account, Relay 314 was the source of a war between the Turians and the humans. Now, it could just be a little bit of a nod to that, but a lot of people think that this could be starting to tie into deep space. A rumored, as this writer would put it, super mass relay to bridge the Milky Way with Andromeda. Again, something that we did hear about within the trailer when they revealed it, where they said Arc 6 is away, Godspeed around the 32nd mark. There's even symbolism perhaps picked up within these shots that would connect Mass Effect trilogy with Andromeda in a more significant way. As CB writes, one, two, three, being one shade of gray slash blue and four, five, six, seven being another shade. Four and five have a line across and it could appear that this is a bridge or a pathway jutting out of four. Could this mean that four, Andromeda, is to serve as a gateway into the next trilogy? You could be galaxy braining it, but as we continue to comb through this, there is so much detail, so much thought packed into this tease that it's hard to argue against it as I'm going to continue to show you over and over and over in this video. But right now, the theories are going crazy and I do like the idea of tying Mass Effect as a trilogy into Andromeda in a significant way. But at the same time, I feel like Andromeda was a bit of a failed experiment. Um, there is a lot of interesting lore there, but Andromeda as a galaxy never really felt like a new galaxy. It felt like more of what we had seen within Mass Effect as a trilogy. And so there should have been a ton of new races. And I understand why they were the way they were, given the arcs and everything, but I felt like there was less new stuff to see. So I think it would be weird if you bring everyone from the trilogy into Andromeda and we start to subtly inject them with new alien races. I mean, it would be a nice fix up, but I just feel like it would be almost putting a patch over something that should 
stay in the past. But that's just where I personally stand. Now, continuing on, some people have actually even noticed some potential arcs or things that look similar to arcs in Andromeda here in this shot. It would make sense since, according to this writer, some of the engineers and architects stayed behind in the Milky Way. Now, remember what I said earlier about how things get deep. Here you go. Get ready for this one. Queenie Ray wrote, so I can't control myself, and after throwing the audio into a spectrogram visualizer and coming up short, I decided to take a look at the raw metadata of the .mov file in Notepad, and there is some interesting stuff here, such as this file path here that mentions Liara, which of course shouldn't come as too much of a surprise since we did see her in the reveal, but how about this here? N722, which would be the N7 day of 2022, hidden mix five second loop within this clip there is a audio section that mass effect fans are currently trying to decipher and make out what this hidden message may be and it does seem that audio has been decoded so let's take a listen exactly the council will be furious although they should know by now not to underestimate i can see it differently is that what's the most ridiculous exactly the council will be furious Although they should know by now not to underestimate human defiance. Perhaps worse than most daring. I can see it. How did we miss this? Exactly. The council will be furious. For those who couldn't make it out, you can definitely hear, of course, geth noises. And then Liara says, exactly. The council will be furious. Although they should know by now not to underestimate human divines. Then you hear a little bit of scrambling. You hear someone say, I see it. How did we miss this? Now, the theory right now that I'm running with is we're talking about a brand new corporation here, right? We're talking about Green Dagger being involved in this relay. And I wonder if they are building this, say, relay by themselves and they're defying the council, they're defying humanity, and they are doing it, again, off the grid. This would make a lot of sense, and in a couple of ways would remind me of how Cerberus operated in Mass Effect 2. And the fun does continue with this deep dive on the audio, because now project director Mike Gamble has confirmed what the audio is, writing on his personal Twitter account, although they should know by now not to underestimate human defiance. Liara to Sony. Doctor, Shadow Broker, and Redacted. So there is a missing piece of the puzzle here. There's been a lot of speculation again on this. Is it going to be a matriarch? Is it Spectre even? What could it be? There's a lot of people tossing ideas around. It's all accompanied by another brand new piece of concept art here. And the most noteworthy takeaway that we've seen with this is that specifically the Turing on the right, and you can even see on the Solarian in the background, they're wearing breathing masks. So I am not exactly sure what this implies. A lot of this is raw, coming off fresh, hot off the press. So your guess is as good as mine, but they're continuing to drip feed lots of information on what exactly is happening within the Mass Effect universe during the timing of Mass Effect 5. And it perhaps ties back to that Cytherium system. You see, the Cytherium system was never mentioned in all of Mass Effect. This would be an entirely brand new system for us to explore. And that would mean that what we're hearing from there, potentially if that's the case, could be something that no Mass Effect fan knows what it is. And you may see little signs of that throughout this speculation. For example, here, there's a little bit of an ominous part within the file that says Originator Reaper. Okay, but Geeky Pastimes had actually posted that within the spectrogram, there are almost like symbols for the sound. Again, I think indicating that there could be something out there in the Cytherium system that we're traveling to. Remember though, that when you travel to a place through the mass relay, that if there isn't a mass relay built there, there's no way back. Now, could they be attaching it to a ship so they could warp to multiple galaxies? That could be a really cool idea. I'm not entirely sure. I think that almost kicks the door down too hard and there's so many possibilities that the game's mechanics won't be able to uphold that, but I'm willing to keep an open mind on it. It just seems so broad and vast for what I hope Bioware does is return to their form with tighter RPGs. Now let's talk timeline because we talked a lot about Mass Effect as a trilogy. We talked a lot about Mass Effect Andromeda. When will this game be set? Well, at the bottom left corner of the text here, you'll see 11-7 being today's date when N7 Day is with the year 90. 
which would potentially indicate this is four years after Mass Effect 3, which takes place in 2186. Now, I think personally that this is actually going to take place about 100 years into the future past Mass Effect 3's ending. Number one, if we see them constructing these new mass relays, to me that just says that that's going to take some time. So yeah, they're, they're probably not going to uh, do that in a flash, especially considering that it's brand new technology. If it's not using the Prothean technology, it's their own. That is again, gonna take some troubleshooting to figure it out. We also don't know their goals with this mass relay, which again, I think may extend the timeline. What you also have to consider, and perhaps the bigger clue that's less speculative is Liara. We saw Liara and she did look older. Now we do know that the Asaris can live a very long time, hundreds of years, and we saw wrinkles on her. She did not have wrinkles in the trilogy. So if she has wrinkles, that does indicate that this is at least 100 years, I would say, into the future. So this would likely put the game 104 years into the future, say in 2290, which I think makes a little bit more sense. Now, as for Mass Effect Andromeda and how this could connect, Mass Effect Andromeda starts in 2185. However, to separate itself from the Mass Effect trilogy, the Tempest did embark on what is a 600 year journey to the Andromeda galaxy. So by the time they get there, everything that's happened over the Milky Way has happened. It's over, it's done with. So I personally believe that this is their way of threading the needle where they can take the beginning parts of Andromeda, what they were doing, the mentioning of the Ark, the tying into the galaxies, and still manage to keep some of those elements while focusing on the trilogy and what was built there and continuing the more interesting, in my opinion, storyline over there. And I don't mean to turn this into a slander fest for Mass Effect Andromeda. I just personally believe that this seems to be where Bioware is going, setting it far enough apart to separate itself from the original trilogy where there is a continuation there, but it's likely going to be a lot of brand new faces with familiar locations. And of course, the occasional familiar face like Liara, which would make sense within its lore. Otherwise, I think it will keep the distance from the trilogy while still letting Andromeda exist out on its own. And this could be, and this may be a hot take, but I think it would be totally accurate if it turns out this way. What we've seen Disney do a bit with the Clone Wars, where over time Dave Filoni has turned the Clone Wars into a beloved era for many. I always loved it growing up, but I think that's part of it. I grew up with it, but it was certainly a flawed movie trilogy. But as we got supplemental pieces of content, books, comics, shows, so on and so forth, people really fell in love with that era, and it's become the strongest part of Star Wars for many, where I feel like we could see the same thing happen with Andromeda, where if you maybe fill in that gap in between with a much more interesting story that respects how Andromeda exists, then you can make Andromeda look like a stronger product just by the way the game before it, technically before it, in the terms of the timeline, was written. You get what I'm saying? I feel like that is the route they could take here where it's separate enough, but it can maybe help out what Andromeda is doing. I could be wrong though. That's just the theory I came to based off everything that's here, but there's so many ways you could go with it. I'm sure you all are thinking differently and I'd love to hear those thoughts because that's everything I have to share with you in today's video. So fire away. What do you think about what was shared here by Bioware on N7 Day? I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.